So now we're going to talk about two different types of caches, instruction caches and data caches. So the reason we have separate instruction and data caches is we need to load the instruction and the data at the same time. So if we look, for example, at a load word instruction here, we need one memory access to just load the instruction, and then we need another memory access to actually load the data the instruction's referencing to. So for memory instructions, we need to access both the memory, and, both the memory to get the instruction and the memory to get the data. To do this, we have two caches. We have one cache for instructions and one cache for data. And these are not surprisingly called the instruction cache, or I cache, and the data cache, or D cache. So how do we calculate the average memory access time with separate caches? Well, we just do one thing for the instructions, where this is just the AMAT for the instructions, times the percentage of instruction accesses. And we do it for data as well. So the percentage of data accesses times the data information. And what you notice here is that the miss ratios for instruction and data may be different. So it may be that the instruction cache is much better than the data cache. And so you need to take this into account to see which one hurts you more. And then for the final AMAT, you just add them up. So let's take a look at an example here. So here I have an example. We have one cycle cache access time for hit or miss and 100 mem cycle memory access time. Our instruction cache has a miss ratio of only 1%. But our data cache has a miss ratio of 5%. 33% of instructions are loads or stores. So now let's apply this formula. So from instructions, well, 100% of instructions need to load an instruction, because they're instructions. So 100% of them are going to access the cache. 99% of the time we hit, 1% of the time we miss, and when we miss, it costs us this much. From the data, only 33% of instructions are going to access the cache. But of those 33%, 95% are going to hit, and 5% are going to miss. So our total average memory access time is going to be 4 cycles. And if you look here, you'll see that data accesses are only a third of the memory accesses, but because they have a higher miss ratio, they account for half the performance loss. So let's take a look at what caches really look like in processors. So here's AMD's Bulldozer dual core, and here's Intel's Sandy Bridge, which has 4 cores. So both of these have these big caches here, these yellow ones. These are both data and instruction caches. And actually, the Intel processor has two sets of data and instruction caches. But in addition to these mixed data instruction caches, they also have separate instruction caches and separate data caches for the processor. And the Intel processor also has these separate instruction and data caches. And when you look at a picture like this, these very regular areas, they look sort of like checkerboards, that's usually what caches look like. And take a look at some other processors. So here's AMD's Fusion. This is a four-core CPU down here at the bottom, plus a GPU on the same chip. And we see again we have these shared caches here. And here's Apple's A6, which has its shared caches here as well. And then both of these also have separate instruction and data caches. And you just saw why they have separate instruction and data caches, because we need to load an instruction on every cycle, and we also need to load data about 33% of the time. So a question. How many accesses do we have per instruction? Well, the answer here is about 1.33. And as I just said, it's because all instructions load an instruction, and about a third of instructions are loads or stores, so also access data memory. Why do we have separate instruction and data caches? Well, the reason is we need to access the instruction cache on every cycle, so we need a separate memory for it. If we're going to do a data access, then we need to be able to access two memories for that instruction. So we need to have two of them, or our performance will be really bad. If we had to share the memory between data accesses and instruction accesses, it would really hurt our performance.